we have seen the lobes of cerebrum and how these lobes are formed. Now we will talk about the internal structure. If we see the section of the cerebral hemisphere, we said that the outer part is known as the cortex. So this is the cerebral cortex and which is made up of only the neuron heads or the cell body. So this is also known as gray matter. Whereas the inner part which has only the exon exon part of the neuron is the medulla region and it is known as cerebral medulla and it is made up of, or it is also known as white matter because it has only that myelinated neuron fiber that is the exon one. Now if you are talking about this complete uh, cerebrum then it has roof also and floor also. So roof of cerebrum is known as pallium which is the one which has sulci and gyri. So this is with sulci and gyri. That is the ridges and furrows. And the floor is known as corpus striatum. This is the floor of the cerebrum. So upper layer that is the roof part and the lower layer that is the floor part. Cerebrum or cerebral hemispheres are hollow. They have cavities. Cerebral hemispheres are hollow. And these cavities are known as ventricles. The cavity is known as ventricle. Now here we want to understand how these ventricles are and what are they labeled or called. So we will draw the dorsal view of the cerebral hemisphere. So we are trying to draw this cerebral hemisphere one and the other one. Now the outer surface is not smooth, it has sulci and gyri and the part which separates this depression is the cerebral fissure which is separating them. Now this is the cerebrum which is visible from the dorsal side and here there is this bulging area. Suppose we cut this like that. So what is going to be visible to us? We would see the outer part that is cerebral cortex and inner to cerebral cortex we would also see the cerebral medulla. So let us draw this cerebral medulla here and this cavity, let me draw this cortex in this region also and then the medulla also. So this space which is visible inside, this is the cavity that we are talking of. So cavity or the ventricles which are found in cerebral hemispheres, they are known as lateral ventricles. So ventricles of cerebral hemispheres are called lateral ventricles or paraceae. Important term, either they are called lateral ventricles or they are called paraceals. Now, this is the right ventricle and this would be the left ventricle. So, this is the right ventricle and it is known as first ventricle. And this one is the left ventricle and it is known as the second ventricle. So first and second ventricles, they are present in 
the cerebral hemisphere. The first one is in the right hemisphere. The second one is in the left hemispheres. Now, these two ventricles are not connected like that, but they are connected to a cavity which is in diencephalon. So, if I erase this and show a connection, say this is the diencephalon. So, in diencephalon also there is a cavity. Let me use another color. So, this is the cavity which is in diencephalon. So, the two ventricles that is the left and the right they open with a common opening into the third ventricle so this is the third ventricle which is in diencephalon diencephalon is the third part of forebrain so the two ventricles that is the first and the uh, second they open through a common opening into the third ventricle. This common opening with which they open is known as foramen of Monroe. So again a very important term. So in cerebral hemispheres from outside we see the lobes. When we cut it we see the outer part of the wall is cortex, inner part is medulla. Cortex is made up of gray matter, medulla is made up of white matter. Both these hemispheres are hollow. They have fluid filled cavities and these cavities are known as ventricles. The ventricles which are found in the right and the left, they are called first and the second. This has to be remembered. The first ventricle term is given to the ventricle which is found in the right hemisphere. The second ventricle term is given to the one which is found in left hemisphere. Together they are known as lateral uh, ventricles or paraceal. This is fluid fit. These two open into third ventricle. There is a cavity in diencephalon which is called third ventricle through common opening and that common opening is known as foramen of Montra. So internally also we have understood the structure, externally also we have seen. Now we have to talk about the functions of the cerebrum or cerebral hemispheres. Here I have drawn the various lobes of cerebral hemisphere and we are seeing it from the lateral side. This is the frontal lobe, this is the anterior side, this lobe is the parietal lobe, then occipital and this one is the temporal lobe and we have shown these deep fissures which are separating these lobes and purposefully I have not put the labels here because there are other labels, important labels which we have to talk about. And this red part which we are showing here is the part of hindbrain. So we are not focusing on that right now. Now, in this cerebral hemisphere, there are so many control areas. This is the main part of our brain which is responsible for sensory, motor also, analytical, so many important functions. And once we go through it, you would realize that this part plays such an important role. We will start from the frontal lobe. Now in the frontal lobe, there is an association area. Association area helps us in association or uh, coordinate our body in various conditions. After receiving any kind of sensation, after movements or during movements and even in learning, how this association of our body works. That is controlled by this part of the frontal lobe. If there is a premotor area in the frontal lobe again and it is responsible for controlling involuntary muscles and autonomous nervous system. Then there is a motor area which is responsible for controlling voluntary muscles. So motor area controls voluntary, premotor controls involuntary. There is one more area in the uh, front, uh, frontal lobe itself and that is known as Broca's area. It is, a, it is associated with our speech. The way we speak, how clear the speech is, that is controlled by Broca's area. 
Then there is a sensory part also, the sensory area which is responsible for the senses of touch, pressure. So frontal lobe is responsible for association, control of voluntary involuntary, speech and even senses. Coming to parietal lobe that is this lobe which is in the middle part. There is body awareness center. Are we aware how our body is moving and how which part of the body is where and how it works. Basically our awareness part of the body that is controlled by this part. Language, reading, how we read, how much we are able to comprehend all those and even taste. This is controlled by the parietal lobe. Occipital lobe at the back side or at the posterior side has the visual area. Temporal lobe has again an area which is associated with speech. So this is known as vernix area. Broca's area which is in the frontal lobe is also associated with speech and this is associated with speech. The difference is this is with our speech, the way we speak and this area is helping us understand somebody else's speech. The, when somebody is talking to us, are we able to understand what that person is saying or the words which are coming? So this is about understanding the speech and this is about our speech, the way we speak. Then there are auditory areas and olfactory areas. If you are able to recall when we made olfactory lobes, there were two parts, the upper bulb part and the track part. We said the track part goes and attaches to the olfactory area of the temporal lobe. So this is responsible for sense of smell. This is for hearing and this Verkens area we have already talked of. So our cerebrum is responsible for, if we have to sum up the functions, sensory functions, motor functions, Various types of awareness, learning skills, all these things are controlled by cerebral hemisphere. Plus, it is also considered as the analytical part of our brain. The things which we understand and analyze, interpret it, all that is also done by this one. Scientists also believe that the information that we gather is stored in this part in the form of memory. So, this is the most important part of our Brain. So this is the second part of the prosencephalon. Now in the next segment we will talk about the third part that is diencephalon.